Oh, hey, didn't see you come in there. I was just looking at my nerd ass books and I was thinking to myself, I'm into a lot of stuff. I am seriously into everything. I made this YouTube channel based on the wide variety of hobbies and media that I'm interested in. And when I say I'm into everything, I mean it. I'm into Star Wars, Star Trek, video games, chess, Lord of the Rings, wrestling, Harry Potter, even though J.K. Rowling is a spoiled milk soggy ass turf, anime, American animation, French animation, hell I even like shit with puppets in it, I like comics, manga, tokusatsu from Japan and America, Godzilla, role playing games, Magic the Gathering, fantasy and science fiction books, Doctor Who, Dune, and shit I even like Twilight now. But for most of my life, there was always one thing that I hadn't gotten into yet. One final nerd ass infinity stone that I had yet to add to my catalog. Warhammer. And I'd always be in geek stores looking at people playing Warhammer and think, golly, that looks neat. But other than that, I didn't really have exposure to it. I didn't have anybody to show me the hobby or anything. But then one day last year when I was perusing the internet, I happened to stumble upon something that immediately caught my attention. I watched a Warhammer 40k fan film. And listen, I know. I usually do not like fan-made content. Usually when I hear someone say fan film, I think of... Please. You're over, Sora. No! You know. But let me just tell you, this shit is on another fucking level. This is Astartes, a Warhammer 40k fan project made by one person. Yes, you heard me. One brave lunatic managed to make this all on his own, and he's still making more. Not only does it look gorgeous, but it has some amazing wordless storytelling. You don't need to know shit about Warhammer to enjoy this. As of the time of this video's release, there's about 13 minutes worth of content in this series. If you watch this and aren't at least a little interested, then I'm sorry, I really don't think we can be friends. After I watched this, I went out and bought miniatures the next day. I'm not joking, I did not hesitate. I watched this and thought, okay, alright, you got me. But one thing I found out quickly is that this hobby is really big, and it's kind of intimidating. But I've noticed that this year in particular, I've seen way more people getting into the hobby. I just started at the end of 2019, and I constantly get other content creators reaching out to talk about how to start playing, or asking about what army I play, and the one thing I think is interesting is that a lot of people have different exposure to Warhammer. It is a very big franchise, and it's bigger than most people realize. Some people have played some of the video games without even knowing about the tabletop roots. A lot of you have probably already played Vermintide or Total War and never thought twice about the miniature game that they're based on. Some people have read 40k books and immersed in the insanely deep lore without even painting a single miniature. I think it's pretty cool, and it just goes to show you how massive the hobby is. Personally, I really like getting into something if I know it's popular. This may sound shallow, but it's mostly because that means that I can probably find someone else who's into it. I also figure that if it's this popular and this many people like it, then they gotta be onto something. There's gotta be some appeal. But another thing is, even though this franchise has been around for decades, it's actually really hard to find resources online for how to get into the miniatures yourself. And it just so happens that as of the time of me making this video, a lot of people have a lot of free time on their hands. And that's why we're here today, because I think anybody can get into this game as long as they have the right resources. So if you don't know how this kind of video works, usually I start by explaining the appeal of the hobby and I talk about why I think it's cool, and then I go into how you can get into it yourself with budget in mind. I know this hobby can be expensive, but there are cheap ways to get into it, which I'll get into later. But first, let's talk about what Warhammer is. Warhammer is a franchise made by Games Workshop, and it's centered around miniature wargaming. There are a lot of similarities between this game and real-time strategy games, or MOBAs if you are so inclined. Basically, it's a game where you control little tiny people, and then your opponent controls little tiny people. It's really not that complicated. But there are two versions, the fantasy variant, called Age of Sigmar, and the sci-fi flavor, the more popular Warhammer 40k. I personally play both of these games, and I'll try to talk about both of them equally, but I do prefer 40k, so sorry for that. Age of Sigmar is your standard fantasy universe with some spicy differences so you don't compare it to Tolkien too heavily. 
You have your dwarves and your orcs and your elves, but you also have some weird shit like snake women or eel riding water elves or my personal favorite, flesh eating ghouls who fully believe they are noble aristocrats. Age of Sigmar used to be called Warhammer Fantasy, but then they kind of rebranded and changed up all the lore and made things pretty complicated, so it's kind of new, and as such it's a little harder to find resources about it. And as a whole I would say Age of Sigmar is much more reserved than 40k, and if you want to play as a faction that can be seen as heroic or the good guys, then you might want to look here. Warhammer in general is pretty bleak, but Age of Sigmar is slightly more optimistic if you ask me. Also, it cannot be disputed that Age of Sigmar has the most gorgeous models that Games Workshop produces. If you just want to play the game that has the best looking units, you're going to want to play this one. I'm not joking, some of this shit is bananas. On the other side of things, you have Warhammer 40k, which is my preferred flavor of Warhammer. This is the one that most people know about, and I can't even explain the universe too much because it's a lot to get into. But to make things as simple as possible, 40k is set in the distant future where humans all worship a desiccated wizard king who sits comatose on a soul-sucking throne. Most of the future technology that mankind has invented has been lost to time, and as such, it's pretty dark and miserable. Everybody's really pissed off all the time, and every faction is at least a little bit evil. You have overzealous battle nuns, genetically engineered super soldiers that fight against demons and dinosaur riding elves and communist space weeaboos and zerglings and orcs that drag race and have mushrooms for brains. The idea is that in 40k everything is pretty fucking ridiculous, and I personally love that. Nothing in this universe is simple. You might look at a space marine and think to yourself, okay, I get it, you know, this is a Buzz Lightyear looking ass dude with a gun, what else is there to understand here? But then you find out in the canon that they are 8 feet tall, they can breathe underwater, and also spit acid because nothing's allowed to be normal in this universe. Oh, I'm sorry, you thought this was just a normal orc? Well, you're a fool then, you're a complete moron, because these orcs actually generate an immensely powerful psychic aura that makes it so whatever they collectively believe becomes true. If they believe that their ramshackle duct tape airship will fly, then it will. They all believe that red cars go faster, so for them, they do. And you can totally play either tabletop game without learning any of the lore, but as you play, sometimes you get little bits of lore in the gameplay. What's the difference between giving my captain a power sword and a chain sword? Well, one is a fucking lightsaber that pierces armor, and one's literally a chainsaw, so it gives you extra attacks. After a while, it's kind of hard to play the game and paint the models without having the insane and crazy lore poking in from time to time. And this stuff also helps toward building a connection between you and the little mini people you're painting. Because half of the miniature wargaming hobby is devoted to actually assembling and painting your forces. And for some people, this is more fun than actually playing the game. You really feel a connection with your army when you're the one who spent hours gluing them together, painting them, and making sure that they synergize well with each other. My personal favorite thing to do in this hobby is called kit bashing, where you take bits and pieces from other boxes and use them to make custom miniatures. For instance, I needed a necromancer for my skeleton army in Age of Sigmar. So I looked at the necromancer model that Games Workshop sells and, you know, no shade, but he's not really my style. So I took the body and scythe from this wizard box, the head from these Grim Reaper dudes, a gravestone from a ghost, and I chopped up a skeleton to make this skeletal necromancer who's summoning a little buddy to fight for him. And this is fully encouraged by Games Workshop. They want you to experiment and make whatever you want. For my Space Marine army, I wanted one of my captains to be a little faster. He wasn't getting around the battlefield quick enough for my liking. So I went through the book, checked the rules, noticed that I could give my captain a fucking motorcycle, and then I took a bike marine, some wings from a cherub, a flag from a guardsman, and some other odds and ends to make a super over-the-top captain for my army. I love this shit, and I personally gravitate towards factions that have a lot of room for personalization. Some people put hash marks on their vehicles to show how many kills they've gotten over time. One guy took a whole army of Imperial Guard and turned them into goblins. My friend Jessica decided that the regular tree people from Age of Sigmar are just too boring, so she gave them cherry blossoms and they look cool as shit. 
But the point is that no matter how much or how little effort you put into your minis, they will feel like your dudes. In this hobby, there is no rule telling you that you need to paint your goons a certain color or use a unit that you think looks ugly. I try to put my heart into each model that I paint, and as a result, I have more of a connection to my first little ragtag group of space marines than I do to any of the characters I play in Street Fighter or my competitive magic decks. But I've already spent a lot of time talking about the lore and the painting side of the hobby. What about the actual game? Is it even any fun? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Now the core gameplay in Warhammer is not very complicated. You do not need a bunch of fucking tokens and shit. You don't need a D20 or a D10, even though they're nice to have sometimes. All you need is a rule book, a tape measure, some D6s, and the models themselves. The game is really not that hard once you learn the basics. Let's say your average unit moves six inches. If they want, they can use those inches to climb up on obstacles and get a better tactical advantage. Let's say they have a gun that has a 30 inch range. You need to roll at least a three for the gun to hit the bad guy. And yeah, there's a little more to it, but at its core, it really isn't that hard to understand. The complexity comes with how you synergize your units. I explained before that I made my little motorcycle captain, right? And I mainly made him because captains for space marines give everybody who's nearby a buff, and it's hard to get near units when he only has 6 inches of movement. So I made him to complement my army. The rulebook also gives you options to equip stronger units with relics or artifacts or fucking jetpacks to give them more abilities. You can give your dude a magical helmet that makes him run faster, or a badass ancient sword that gives you more potent attacks. It's very reminiscent of Dungeons and Dragons in this regard, and I think it adds a cool element to the game. And that's not the only way you can bring elements of role-playing games into Warhammer. A popular way to play the game is with narrative campaigns, where you and your friends take your armies, come up with a backstory, and play themed missions that are centered around a narrative. See, Warhammer isn't really a game where you put your dudes on the table, and then the other person puts their dudes on a table, and then you just shoot each other until someone dies. It's usually based around specific game modes. These game modes are all super diverse, and they make it so that you don't have to play the same battle twice even if you're using the same models. Maybe you're playing a King of the Hill game mode where you have to sit on an objective and farm the points from it. Or maybe you're playing a payload mission where one player has to transport supplies across the board while the other player tries to stop them. You could have a siege battle where one player is defending a base and the other player has to break in. Some game modes might be straight up unbalanced, but that can be pretty fun too. I've had games where I've barely managed to survive, but then my skeleton knight runs in at the last second and insta-kills the enemy wizard, giving me enough points to win the game. It's kind of badass to have most of your army die and then win anyway because the last unit on your side actually secured the objective that you needed. It's pretty cinematic and it's really exciting to experience. Me and my friends have played basic skirmishes, but we find that we have a lot more fun when we add a narrative element to our game. It gives it a little extra flavor, it makes it more fun. Me and my friends are currently building custom generals for our Age of Sigmar armies so we can play a full narrative campaign centered around the backstories that we made. There is a lot of freedom in how you play the game, and everybody plays it differently. And much like the painting side of the hobby, you really feel a connection to what's happening when you add a little extra flavor. I think some people look at Warhammer gameplay from afar and they think it looks boring and overly complicated, and neither of those things are true. A typical battle in Warhammer might start with your snipers deploying in a desiccated building where they can pick off units from afar, while your noble space paladin leads a group of foot soldiers and some mech suits to cover ground. But this is all a distraction, so the enemy doesn't notice the units you just dropped in from the atmosphere placed right on their flank. One player might be controlling a powerful spellcaster whose power becomes uncontrollable and backfires, killing them and any nearby units. <laughs> you might be fighting a battle where one player has a defensive gun line, only to be thwarted by the orc player casting a spell that gives their orcs the ability to jump across the entire battlefield. It might be the fourth turn where you think you have the enemy forces mostly defeated, but everybody's gangster until more angry tree people start popping out of the ground. No two battles of Warhammer are the same, and the best thing about the game is that you can tailor each encounter to the tastes of yourself and the friends that you're playing with. So hopefully by now I've caught the attention of a few of you, and say you want to get into this hobby but you don't know where to start. Well for the rest of the video we are going to try to break down step by step how you can get into this game with budget in mind. Number one, pick a game. You got Age of Sigmar or 40k. Honestly, they're pretty similar. So just play the one that you think looks cooler. Yes, they have their differences, but it really comes down to which flavor seems cooler to you. 
If you can't decide and you just want to play the one that everybody else plays, just pick 40k. 40k also has more resources online if you need guidance along the road. Next, pick a faction. I don't have time in this video to explain every faction from each game. There's too much to go through and other people have already done it. First I'm going to link you guys to Bricky's video where he explains each faction in 40k and he talks a little bit about their lore and explains how they play in the game. It's a really useful video, watch that one if you want to play 40k. However, no such video really exists for Age of Sigmar, it's kind of a newer game comparatively and new factions keep getting added. Hell, while working on this video, a new faction was just added to the game. So for both games, you also have the option of going on 1d4chan.org. And don't worry, it's not like that other website. On here you can find a rundown for every faction for any tabletop game that you might want to play. And it's written by regular people, so it's in terms that anybody can understand. If you want to know the pros and cons of playing goblins, just look up their tactics page and click the pros and cons. But honestly, at the end of the day, when it comes to picking a faction, just pick one that looks cool to you. I like the Terran in Starcraft, I like robots and dudes with guns, so I play Space Marines. Maybe I have brain worms, but I just think they look cool. Similarly, I like Dark Souls, so I play skeletons and ghouls in Age of Sigmar. It honestly doesn't really have to be too complicated. The fact is that you are not going to have fun building and painting models unless you think that they look cool. So next, you actually gotta buy stuff. Unfortunately, this isn't really the kind of hobby that you can play for free. I actually wasn't really gonna make this video because I don't like encouraging people to get into something that's so expensive, and Warhammer can be expensive. But the key word is that it can be expensive. It doesn't have to be. Unfortunately, in order to field a full 2,000 point competitive Warhammer army, you're going to need to spend a lot of fucking money. <laughs> now don't turn the video off yet, I'm not stupid, I know most people don't want to spend this kind of money on anything, let alone a game that they don't even know if they like or not. And you aren't supposed to. A 2,000 point list is like the ultimate form of your army, meant for competitive play. This is too much to handle for most people, and how are you even supposed to know what to put in your army? How are you supposed to know what units are fun? But luckily Games Workshop put this into consideration. They have a little thing called skirmish game types. Skirmish games are a beginner friendly entry into the hobby with two game variants. Kill Team for Warhammer 40k and Warcry for Age of Sigmar. These games focus on smaller scale battles and they are way softer on your wallet as a result. In normal Warhammer you control large chunks of miniatures. One box of marines is like 30 to 40 bucks and that only gives you one group that moves and acts as a unified squad. In a normal 40k army you might be bringing like 3 to 5 of these groups. However, in skirmish modes you control each unit individually and that unit has their own abilities and equipment that they use. A single box of marines can be turned into an entire squad with each guy having a unique class and loadout. I actually started by playing Kill Team and to be honest, some days I like it more than full army 40k. I'd say about 80% of the time you can build a full squad out of a single box of models. I haven't personally played Warcry myself, but I know that similarly to Kill Team, it is a much more condensed version of Age of Sigmar where you control individual models. Both of these are an easy way to get into the game with minimal money put in. But also keep in mind that if you build and paint units for either Kill Team or Warcry, you can then take those units and play them in larger army Warhammer games if you really want to. You're just going to need more units to accompany them. So as such, I think that Kill Team and Warcry are amazing ways to get into the game and also it incentivizes you to customize your miniatures because you're not going to be painting as many of them. I have put an insane amount of love and care into the Kill Teams that I've made and I personally would not be putting in the same kind of effort if I was painting like 50 guys. So if these smaller scale games interest you as a starting point, then you have a few options. Starter boxes exist that contain two full armies, a rule book, and actual terrain to play on. Now these starter kits can be a little pricey, but if you split it with a friend, it ain't any worse than buying a new video game. Also, in my experience I've found that it's way easier to convince your friends to play the smaller scale games as opposed to convincing them to commit to this shit right out of the gate. Alternatively, if this is too much, then you can just get your hands on the rulebook separately and then get a box of models for the faction that you want. 
So in the description I have linked two videos that will tell you how to make a squad for each faction with as few boxes as possible. If you asked me to pick one box to help get into the hobby as easily as possible, I would by far just say buy the Kill Team starter box and split it with a friend. It comes with everything you would ever need to play the game and all the stuff that you get in the box you can use in other versions of Warhammer. And not only is it cheaper, but for some people, it's the only way they even play the game. I personally gotten all of my friends into the game by showing them Kill Team first. And then some of them have gotten so invested that they've gone on to build larger armies for other games. So that's our first option for getting into the game. But say you don't want to play smaller scale battles. Say you want to bring out the giant robots. You want the tanks. You want the airplanes. You want to go the full way, full armies. Well, I still recommend you start on the smaller side. Again, the best way to get into this side of Warhammer is by doing a starter box. Age of Sigmar actually comes with a few starter boxes and they come with a different amount of units depending on how much money you wanna spend. And as of the time of me making this video, there is actually a brand new box for 40K's new edition. And these boxes usually include two factions with some diverse fun units to try out, the box will also contain rules for the factions that are inside, and that's another thing that's kind of annoying about Warhammer. These maniacs expect you to buy the core rulebook along with a separate rulebook for your faction. These faction specific books are useful if you want to increase the size of your army and learn more about their abilities, but I promise I would keep things cheap and these aren't cheap. So I'm going to tell you about something that Games Workshop doesn't really want me to tell you about. And no, it's not an illegal option so you don't have to worry too much. Instead of resorting to buying all of this supplementary material, you can just download the app Battlescribe, which is free and available on smartphones and desktops. And it's super easy to understand. Just pick the game that you're playing, pick the faction, decide how many points your army contains, and pick the units. Like I said, this game is kind of like D&D in the way that you need a character sheet if you want to play. But really, if you want to play full army 40k, you still just have to get models and the rulebook, and a list that represents what your army can do. If you're getting one of these starter boxes, it'll come with all three of these things, so just keep that in mind. Now all these tips are cool and all, but if you ask me, I think we've still spent too much money. And as of the time of making this video, it's not really even easy to play this game with other human beings in person. So let's find a way to demo the game remotely. Introducing Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator is a game on Steam that lets you simulate tabletop games. Crazy, I know. This means it can also be used to play Warhammer, and I'll link a guide on how to play it in Tabletop Simulator. I'll say that playing on here is not really the same because you don't have that hands-on experience, which is kind of what Warhammer is all about, but it is a really good way to demo the game and see if you even like it. So if the money's a little tight and you're not so sure if this is something you want to invest in, I recommend trying Tabletop Simulator to see if you're even into the game at all. So, moving on, we decided on a game, we picked a faction, and we actually bought some models. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to assemble them, you're a big kid, you can handle that, just follow the pictures. But, we're going to do the scary part now. We gotta paint them. Now first of all, if you think that you can't paint miniatures because you're not creative or artistic, then you're wrong, okay? Now yes, I know that some people do have physical disabilities that make it so they can't really paint miniatures that easily or at all. But I know that a lot of you guys just lack confidence because you think your hands are too shaky and you can't detail small objects. Now let me tell you about myself. First of all, I am not an artist, okay? I make YouTube videos for fuck's sake. Secondly, I have the shakiest hands in the Wild West. I think I have a vitamin deficiency or something. Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you know what's wrong with me. And the third thing is, I just don't know how to paint. Like, straight up. Hell, these are the first miniatures that I ever painted. Don't laugh. The main thing to keep in mind when it comes to miniature painting is that you're not making a work of art. I always say that miniature painting is a lot like doing an advanced coloring book. You're just painting inside the lines. Now I don't have time to tell you guys a step-by-step -step process to painting, so I'll refer you to a perfect video by Goobertown Hobbies. He teaches you the most basic way to get started slinging paint onto some minis, and he really is the Bob Ross of miniature painting. Then if you want more advanced techniques, I recommend watching Miniac. He has some next level tech when it comes to painting miniatures, and his videos are also pretty fucking funny. And while we're recommending channels, I'll also shout out Midwinter Minis who has some awesome videos on how to speed paint easily, which is pretty useful if you want to paint a large amount of troops. And last but not least, I'll recommend Squidmar Miniatures, who flexes with some of the most impressive projects that you will find on mini painting YouTube. Oh, and I've mentioned it a few times so far, but we do actually need terrain to play Warhammer. 
Now, while you can play with water bottles and books, I assume you're going to want some cooler stuff on your table too. So I've linked a playlist by Gamza on YouTube where he teaches you how to make some pretty good terrain out of garbage that you might just have lying around. Also linked below is the channel Black Magic Craft, who has some videos on how to make terrain at an intermediate to advanced level. Now there are tons of other channels that can teach you other techniques, so don't be afraid to branch out and look for more. I personally tend to do more painting and crafting than actual playing of the game, but that's just me. Just keep in mind while you're painting that your miniatures only need to look good from three feet up. Remember, they are miniatures. If you hold any miniature up to close scrutiny, you're not going to see the same level of detail that you'll see on a fucking human face. Don't focus on the flaws, just try to make them presentable and make sure that you have fun with it. But some of you may be saying, Marcus, it doesn't matter what you say to me. I am not artistic. I've never done something like this. I have 20 space marines to paint and I hate you. And you know what? That's okay. I hear you. It is a little intimidating, but don't worry, bro. On God, I got you. Just to prove this shit is not hard, we're gonna do one together. I'm gonna give you the Cosmonaut life hack for painting miniatures with almost no effort. All right, guys, pay attention, because this is gonna be really quick. We are painting a space marine, and we're gonna make him look like the box art. He's gonna be the most normal looking space marine ever, and we're gonna do it fast. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna spray him to be the color that you want him to be. They start off gray. I went outside and I sprayed this guy blue. Keep in mind, it doesn't really matter what brand of spray paint you use, okay? You could go to Walmart, Home Depot, get some normal, normal spray if you want. Now here's the thing, half the work's already done for us, okay? Look, he's already one color. That's great, that's perfect, that's what we want. Okay, so to do this, we do not need that many paints. Um, the paints that we are going to use are going to be a gold paint. A metallic silver paint. I'm using Lead Belcher from Citadel for this one. A regular black paint. And the same shade of blue that we sprayed our boy in, in case we make a mistake and have to fix it. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna paint is the gold detail. Alright, gold is gonna go around the armor trim here. Okay, this part. And his chest emblem. Okay? Alright, so that's step one done. Gold stuff on the shoulder and the chest. Now, I missed a few spots. That's okay, I'm gonna fix it later. We're not gonna fix it right now. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the black stuff. The black is just gonna go on the gun. That's it, okay? Okay, gun's black. Pretty easy step. He's kinda starting to come along now. We only have like a couple more things that we're gonna do. So while I'm waiting for the black to dry, we're gonna go ahead and fix the places where I missed. All the mistakes are gonna get fixed now. Mistakes fixed. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some silver detailing to the gun. Now if you want, you can leave the gun black. That's up to you. It really doesn't matter that much, as long as it's a separate color from him. But I think it looks kind of boring, and it doesn't take that much extra effort to just add a little bit of detailing on the gun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the little muzzle there, the scope, and the magazine. Okay? Alright, so that is all of our core colors placed onto the miniature. Now, if you ask me, he's he's lacking a little bit of detail. He looks like kind of like a fucking blue flat cartoon character. And look at all of his back here. This is one one flat blue chunk. And we don't like that. We want to get some detail into him, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the secret weapon. We call this cheat juice because it's going to make it look like you did a lot more work than you actually did. This stuff is called Nuln Oil, okay? It is your best friend when you are just starting out painting because it's gonna basically add a ton of detail for no effort. If you've ever seen pictures of other people's miniatures and they have like all those little, those little tiny lines and crevices filled in with black and you're like, how'd they get in there? How'd they get their little brush in, in those little crevices so easily? They didn't. They used this, okay? Now this can be kind of a scary step if you're just starting out because you don't want to mess up all the work you did, but it's paint. What we're going to do is we are just going to completely cover this guy with Nuln Oil, alright? There are ways to make Nuln Oil with just by painting, by mixing black paint and, and water. You can make this stuff pretty easily, but the actual like product itself is going to behave a little nicer. Alright, so this guy's going to take a second to dry. Um, while he dries, 
we are going to want to do the base of the miniature. We don't want the base to be naked, okay? The best way to make this guy look like he's actually like a tiny little living person is to put dirt and stuff at his feet, okay? Now some people just paint it black and call it a day when they're just starting out. We don't want to do that, okay? That's what amateurs do. We're not amateurs. So what I'm going to do is I've watered down some glue, just some regular ass PVA glue. And I'm just going to paint this glue onto the base. And then we are just going to dunk this guy in some dirt or sand that we have. You can go outside and get some dirt. Make sure that you bake it so that you don't have any bacteria and other little creepy crawlies in your, in your dirt. I have the hiccups. It's making this very difficult. Get in there, buddy. Get in there. Yeah, look at that. We love that. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, we love it. And then after that, what we want to do is we want to paint the rim of the base a different color. Make sure it's not the same color as him because he won't really pop. I like to make the rims black, but that's just me. This is what our boy looks like. Honestly, he isn't going to win any beauty pageants or anything. But the point is that you want to get your guys looking presentable. Now, if you want to call that a day, that's fine. He looks pretty done to me. At least from, you know, from this distance he does. Now, if you want to bring him up to a better level, what I would do if this was my little blue, little blue space boy, I'd probably bring that same color blue that he originally was back into some of the key areas. Last thing we can do, if we're feeling brave, just to get a little more detail, is we're gonna do those eyes. All right, I'm actually gonna use a much smaller brush for this one. I think the red eyes are what he needed, if I'm being honest. Now, if you ask me, this guy looks good enough. We're just trying to get him presentable. And not to mention, that only took like 20 minutes. Not counting, you know, drying time and me talking to you guys. So, it ain't that hard, okay? Paint your minis. And there you go, guys. It's as easy as that. Once you have your minis ready and you know the rules, you can play the game. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. Trust me. And you guys know that I love introducing people to new things. So if any of these tips helped you and got you into the hobby, please let me know. Some of you may have watched me stream my miniature painting on Twitch, and my favorite part is looking at what you guys made after the stream. So if you get some miniatures and you start working on them, make sure to use the hashtag CosmoCreative on Twitter so that I can see them. And if you don't really care about painting and you just want to play the game, then show me that too. I don't really care. The fun of this hobby is sharing it with other people, and that's mainly why I make videos like this. And before we go, I want to shout out some other content creators because I feel like I never do that, and I want to spread the love a little bit. I've already mentioned the painting side of the hobby, but if you want to learn more about Warhammer 40k lore, then check out Luton's channel. He has hours worth of lore related content, and it's a good way to dip your toes in and learn about the insane universe. Snipe and Wib have a channel where they do fun retrospectives on old Warhammer content, like videos on how models have changed over time, or how the lore used to have some really insane shit, even by 40k standards. Play on Tabletop is a channel that has some of the best Warhammer gameplay on YouTube. It's actually pretty hard to find videos of people actually playing the game that aren't like 5 hours long and hard to understand for a new player. They trim all of the fat out of the videos and they narrate what's going on in the game so that you can easily understand it. If you want to see how the game itself is actually played, then check them out. Pleasant Kenobi is my buddy who usually makes Magic the Gathering content, but he recently picked up Warhammer, and I've really enjoyed watching his Warhammer Wednesday videos, chronicling how he's growing in the hobby over time. Like I said, a lot of people are just recently getting invested in the hobby, and I really like seeing it. And last but not least, I have to shout out Magic Carp Used Fly, who was a big help in providing footage for this video. He also recently got into Warhammer and has a few videos talking about it on his channel. Go check him out, go check everybody out, go sub to them, go give them kisses with their consent. Anyway, that's enough talking for now. Go play with some plastic army people, have fun, take your vitamins, don't sharpen your pencil while the teacher's talking. Bye bye, I love you.